All right, everyone. Thank you um, for joining us today. My name is Nefertiti Shell, and my presentation is on the fruits um, of our um, queer Black radicals. So I picked um, four artists for my presentation, which I will get to in a minute. But first, just a little quick intro about me. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Never TV Show. I currently reside in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am a mixed media artist. I just became a Reiki master and I'm currently in school um, for esthetician. So I'm really trying to get into the guru things, work with my hands more. Um, it was a devotion to myself for 2021 to step outside of my box. Uh, for years, I did accounting work and just been behind the scenes and I'm kind of tired being just in the background. So I have joined this cohort to help me really branch out and I have been having an amazing time with Kiki and everybody that's been pouring themselves into this program. Um, I do have an Instagram. My Instagram is the Queen Nefertiti, and I did start kind of, I guess, a blog um, website, just more my um, what I do, where my journey is going. So if you do want to tune in, um, please subscribe. So as I mentioned, um, I really want to celebrate those that are here and who have come um, before us, especially as queer Black radicals. There's a lot of trendsetters that we don't really know about and who were the first of our kind. Um, and just even outside of just being Black, and what does that mean to us? Because I, I myself, I do identify as a queer individual. And a lot of times we have to choose, you know, being Black or being queer. Whereas why can't we have both? Because that is what makes us who we are today and what we pour into our story, into our art into our music and whatever we do in our everyday life. So I do wanna start off, um, this artist, his name is Dre Bay. I don't know if a lot of you guys know about him, but he definitely was a trendsetter. Um, I'm originally from California, so it was a big thing. Um, it's just a big moment. His big presence was performing with Kalani at the San Francisco Pride back in, I believe, 2018. Um, there was a little bit of controversy, just that they believed that um, her set was cut short due to the surprise guest. But he still has made waves um, on the internet, especially on Twitter, in regards to freestyling with some of these challenges by like City uh, Girls both with Cash Doll and just still have made wave. And that just goes to his artistic drive and hunger. Cause you know, although he's not this big name, he still is going out there and creating his art, still making his presence known regardless. Um, definitely check out his, one of his biggest single, which is called Elegant. Um, it is on YouTube um, and I will leave it at that, but definitely check out J-Bay. The next artist I do want to celebrate um, and enhance is, his name is Kende Wiley. Um, he was biggest known for doing his, um, the self-portrait for Barack Obama when he was in office. A lot of people do not know who he was. You know, we see all this art, but we don't really know the artist behind the art. Um, he's originally a, a South Central LA native, currently has a studio in Brooklyn, New York. And still continues to do um, kind of like these like portraits. What's interesting is his inspiration came from when he was a little kid. His mom owned like an antique shop um, for like secondhand furniture. And a lot of the fabrics he was fascinated with, um, the textile mainly um, known by Morris. And so he used a lot of that in his art, the graphics and the textiles behind the art. But his inspiration is he'll just go out, speak to these people, kind of ask them, you know, if it's okay for him to um, tell their story and use them as muses in his pieces and to tell much of a broader um, picture. He kind of enhances more just that modern, also African, because he's also with a uh, Nigerian background. 
That is Kenny Day Wiley. Definitely check out his work. Um, I do want to pause here for a second to kind of show a clip of his. Great job. Keep going. <laughs> You're doing awesome. Everyone is fascinated by looking at another human being. There's something very intimate about the ways that people assume that by looking at certain parts of the portrait, they'll be able to understand who these people are, where they come from, and why they happen to be in this museum today. In my work, I try to slow down and see individuals. I'm standing on the shoulders of all of those artists who came before me. But here, there's a space for a new way of seeing black and brown bodies all over the world. A New Republic is an exhibition that allows for every single moment within my career, all of the different acts, all of the different bodies of work to be seen. What you get is a diversity of experiences, a picture of what black American kids are up to, a picture of what the global story is with regards to how young people adorn themselves and celebrate and fall in love. It's really interesting to be able to look through the history of some of the great portraits and to say, what is it about the trappings of empire and power that we can use in the 21st century? What does it look like to be graceful? What does it look like to be proud, noble? How do you look at a young black man in American society? It's a very important question, especially at this moment in our culture. The way in which the body is seen has a lot to do with light. How does the artist choose to allow light to flow across the body? For the last 10 years, I've been obsessed with stained glass. What I wanted to do was to create a body of work in which empathy and the language of the religious and the rapturous all collided into one space. Black women have always been at the core of my thinking around portraiture. You see so many portraits where the male figure stands dominant at the forefront of the painting, and women, children, and land are seen in equal measure as possessions. In my own work, the women are strident. They take the front. But there's also a sense of mystery. We don't really know who these women are. Bound is a sculptural project that looks at the presence of black women, all of those women that raised me, the graceful women who've been in my life over the years, but also the ways in which black American women adorn themselves. It's both a type of communication act and armor. And hair is principle within that. You see hair going outside of itself, becoming so fabulous, so extraordinarily large that it folds in under its own weight. It's beauty that becomes decay. It's a place in which the imagination starts to happen. The Brooklyn Museum is extraordinarily important for me. I remember having my first exhibition here, being able to celebrate this moment in a place like Brooklyn where so many of the people who are in these paintings come from is an incredible blessing. In some sense, what I'm trying to do is to come to terms with the ways in which black American culture has been beamed out into the rest of the world. And that is a type of new republic. So that is Kehinde Wiley. And I'm just so fascinated with his work. It's just every time I get to it, I think. <laughs> um, so our next artist that we're going to talk about is Shia Diamond. Um, she is from the little small town of Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, what's also fascinating about her is she is also a transgender woman. Um, and she got into her artistry really later in her um, life. But her story prior to that is very fascinating. Um, her mom had her at the age of 14 and they really struggled um, in Tennessee and like um, in the South, really trying to raise um, a kid at 14 years old. Family wouldn't help. Um, and as she grew up, 
um, her mom had passed away and she ran away um, from home at the age of 14 as well due to the lack of, um, I guess you would say, um, care, um, neglect. None of her family members really wanted to take care of her. So she ended up um, finding ways to take care of herself ended up being incarcerated and was sent to men prison and there that's where she really found her voice to sing and write her music and became who she is today um i do want to share a small clip of her interview just telling the story of um, how she found her voice my testament of, of like what I thought. I thought, literally thought I'd seen it all. I thought that life had dealt me my cards and that's all it would, would be. Incarceration, I knew what that looked like, you know, foster home. I've been a, a product of every system already. So I just thought that's what my life would be. I thought I would probably even die in prison. But seeing it all, you know, I made it out of there. Mm -hmm. And I'm a sign artist. I'm with mm -hmm. Billboard having breakfast. You know, like, I thought I'd seen it all. You were actually at a protest, the, the uh, Trans Lives Matter event, when you were, when you sang I Am Her, and that's how Justin Tranner discovered you. Yes. Right? Tell me about yes. that. Yes. Well, um, for me, um, I had just gotten over a divorce, and um, so basically, you know how relationships go. They break you before they, before they just go. They don't just go gonna break you first. <laughs> Let me make sure you're no good for nobody else first. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to eat. Uh, I was falling to depression. And so somebody, in, um, it was a trans woman uh, from community, she was like, girl, you gotta come out. So um, the first thing she took me to was this um, amazing place um, called um, uh, the Audrey Lord Project. Okay. And, um, and, so, and she asked me to sing. And from there, it was like history. I mean, they never stopped, you know, they, they literally never stopped asking me the same af afterwards. It's like, you know what? We can need you over here for this protest. <laughs> Come over here. We got this protest. Come and sing this, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I, you know, the song that I had wrote while incarcerated, I Am Her, yeah. just became this anthem for every single movement. Mm -hmm. And the, from the women's movement to the trans movement to even the 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 gay movement as well, mm -hmm. like, you know, um, so they was like, okay, we all can uh, resonate, we all can relate to I Am Her. Sure. And so um, I sang I Am Her a cappella for so long. If, I know people just got tired of hearing that song. <laughs> and Justin came and saved the day. Okay. And he literally came and saved the day. And um, I was able to really record it yeah, um, yeah. in its um, authentic authenticity. Mm -hmm. And um, so for me, um, Justin brought some magic to that song. So your next single, um, American Pie, is the music video is coming out at the end of the, the month. Um, did you write that while you were incarcerated as well? I did not. You did not, okay. Um, uh, I wrote American Pie here. All right, so that is she at Diamond. Definitely check her out. She has music on Spotify and is on YouTube. And the last um, artist I do want to celebrate is um, Adrian Muse, also known as Madam Muse. Definitely one of my own personal favorite artists. I have a couple of her prints. Um, she is Florida born, LA bound. Her and her beautiful wife and family, they all create art, very artistic family. Um, she's done pieces for um, Ava DuVernay, have done pieces for Kendrick Lamar. Um, was just featured on Insecure as doing some of the pieces for the show um, set. And just even now make a big presence on TikTok um, with her and her wife, um, especially with just art and the Egyptian history and spirituality. Um, this piece behind um, on this presentation is one of her pieces that she did of Isis. So definitely check her out. Um, I just, I love them. They're just great. <laughs> I definitely want to just end this presentation on a great and uplifting note that, you know, everybody is an artist at the end of the day, no matter how big or small that you want to take it from your little doodles 
from sketching, from writing down notes in a creative way, your presence has the power to ease and uplift other people, it, even if you second guess. I know a lot of us were perfectionists and we're really shy of sharing our work, but you never know who's watching. And also, here's hoping all the love that you give out comes back to you tenfold, regardless how big or small. Just take a leap and a chance on yourself. The biggest investment that you can do is within yourself. So gamble a little bit. But that is my presentation, the fruits of our Black queer radicals. And thank you, everyone.